If you're wondering how Blender performs on the new M1 Pro MacBooks, well, this video is for you. I'll be testing some EV and cycles, material and rendered views. We're we'll doing some rendering and some animations, some thermal testing, and also testing the CPU, GPU and RAM usage while using Blender. Now, this is a base model 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro. We just have the 10 core CPU and the 16 core GPU. Quick note as well, guys, I am using the M1 native version of Blender. So this is the optimized one. Okay, so getting straight into the video, I have a couple of benchmark tests here as well. And guys, I'm not an expert at Blender. So if you guys wanna see any other testing or different test projects, let me know. Let's start with the first one, which is the Mr. Elephant project. Now this is gonna be a very EV heavy project. So we're gonna see how this performs. Okay, so we have the mouse and his cheese here. Uh, let's just switch to the wireframe view. And that works pretty well. There's no lag or anything like that. I mean, it is wireframe, so you would expect that. Let's go to solid, and then we're gonna switch to material view. So that is very, very smooth. Uh, moving to material view, we're gonna see a little bit more lag here, but it definitely is you can still move it around and sort of zoom in and out a little bit easier than what you would expect because this is a relatively demanding scene. And now moving to the rendered view, uh, let me just double check that we are in fact using EV. Yes, we are. Uh, and then moving around in this view, still definitely possible and it's quite smooth as well. It's definitely not something you'd probably want to work in, but for previewing something before you're about to render, um, that really does not work too badly. Okay, so let's now render out an image. So we're going to start the timer and we're gonna start rendering. Okay, so it has finished. You can see I was a little bit fat fingered on the timer here that says 28, when in reality it actually took only 26 seconds, but pretty impressive performance, especially using the EV engine. So let's move on to the next test file. Now this next one is the barbershop interior test file. Uh, this is going to be heavily relying on cycles instead of EV. As you guys already know, cycles is generally a lot tougher to preview and render in. Um, so we'll have a look at how it performs. So if we switch to the wireframe down here, um, there shouldn't be any issues as we can see. That works perfectly well. Switching to material view now. That works just as well. And then material preview and then the rendered view, we'll have a look at what we get. Okay, so we're getting the spinning beach ball here, which isn't really surprising. We are using cycles as the render engine, as you can see there. Um, okay, so we're still getting the spinning beach ball. Okay, so you can see we can still preview things, but uh, it's going to take a really long time. Um, to sort of get that initial render done. Okay, so we can see it's a little bit more usable now. So we'll switch to rendered view and we're probably just, oh no, okay, so it is working now. All right, let's try and move around a bit. Okay, definitely not as smooth as some of the other test files out there. So let's bring up the CPU tab. We can see that only 1% of the CPU is idle. So Obviously the Cycles render engine is really smashing the 10 core CPU. And as you can see also guys, I am using the Apple version of Blender as you can confirm there, not the Intel version. Moving into the memory. So this does have 16 gigabytes of RAM. Again, just the base model. Uh, we're sitting at 12.4 gigabytes total usage uh, with Blender using almost 11 gigabytes, and interestingly enough, zero gigabytes of swap memory. Okay, so these are some geometry modes. Um, depending on what kind of configuration you have, it can sometimes be a little bit difficult to get it to play back smoothly. At least that's what I've found on other computers. So let me just open up the navigate viewport and we'll move around. Okay, so wireframe working totally fine. So is this. Okay, getting some spinning beach ball on the material preview. 
um, but you can see there it's still somewhat responsive once we sort of get over that initial speed bump we can still uh, move around relatively easily moving to the rendered view and we are using cycles at the moment that's actually working not too bad at all you can see that once we're moving around the actual tree it starts rendering straight away um, you know i can sort of navigate around the tree not super super smooth but somewhat well and if we switch this to ev just to have a look at the difference in performance you can see it's much better in ev but obviously don't get the same kind of quality as you do with the cycles engine okay moving on to party tug now this is one of the most requested ones from you guys it is possibly one of the most difficult ones to run uh, that i've found so far but as you can see here and if i just add the viewport back we can still navigate relatively well uh, and if we switch to rendered view and we are using EV for this render cycle, uh, render engine, I should say. Uh, so definitely not super pleasant to use, but uh, it is still possible, which is pretty impressive. Okay, now that this is just kind of sitting here and not rendering or doing anything, let's check out the activity monitor. So we can see here that we're using almost all of the CPU. And if I also bring up the GPU history chart, we'll have a look at that in the corner. In terms of memory, you can see the memory pressure is not very high at all here. So that's nice and good. We've only got about four gigabytes in use with Blender um, with almost half the available memory free. So it doesn't seem like that is super taxing. Now onto the next splash screen, which is the spring demo file. Again, a really highly requested one from you guys. You wanna see how this performs, how it renders and how easy it is to actually use it within Blender. So here it is, let's make this viewport a little bit bigger. Uh, wireframe is gonna work totally fine. Uh, you can see that's nice and smooth, no issues. Solid material view, just as good, almost exactly the same. Material preview, we'll just give it a second to buffer everything. And there we go, so we can now move around. That is actually quite smooth as well. Uh, obviously not quite as smooth as wireframe, but you could very easily get a good idea of what your render is gonna look like using this view. And finally, moving to rendered view. Now, we are using cycles in this, uh, and that is working actually quite well. You can see you can move around quite easily and sort of uh, get a good idea of where you want to stop the camera changing this to ev just to have a look at the comparison between the two uh, much smoother but again obviously with ev uh, not going to be quite as good quality okay so i've now moved the render cycle back to cycles as you can see there we're going to come up here and we're going to render out an image and we're just going to see how long it takes okay so we've been rendering for about seven minutes at this point so let's have a look at the activity monitor now because this is obviously using the cycles render engine it's gonna be very cpu dependent as you can see there zero percent of the cpu is idle you can also see down here with the cpu pressure graph all of these cpus are at 100 percent, so all 10 cores uh, obviously gpu is not being utilized that much because again because of this type of render. Moving on to the memory tab to look at the RAM. You can see Blender's using about 13 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, so it's essentially maxing out the available RAM. We're using 200 megabytes of swap, which is not much. Uh, and the memory pressure there isn't too bad at all. So it seems like 16 gigabytes uh, is enough for this particular render. And if we now have a look at the temperatures of the CPU cores, we can see here that the efficiency cores are around 80 degrees Celsius, but all of the performance cores, which is performance core one to performance core eight, uh, they are sitting at around 88, 89 degrees. And now we've been going for almost 10 minutes, slamming all 10 cores of the CPU, and the fans are barely audible. If you put your face really close to it, you can, but sitting back here, I can, only, I can only just hear them, just very, very barely. Okay, and coincidentally, we have just finished the render. So we can see a total time of 10 minutes and eight seconds for the spring render.
Now, moving on to Splash Fox, and this is an interesting one, guys, because I have done a couple of benchmarks on Splash Fox. So in my video yesterday, I did the 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook versus the 16-inch M1 Pro MacBook. I'll link that up in the top right-hand corner if you wanna check it out. It's basically a comparison between the 14-inch base model and the 16-inch base model. Spoiler, there wasn't any difference, even though this has two additional CPU high-performance cores and also two additional GPU cores. I also did a video comparing the 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook versus the previous 2020 M1 MacBook Pro. And it's safe to say that the 14-inch destroyed the M1 MacBook Pro, but again, I'll link that video so you can check it out. So moving on to if this is usable or not, uh, obviously with the wireframe, works totally fine. Solid, not having any issues there at all either. A little bit of dropped frames, but we are getting a consistent 24 and 25 FPS playback. Moving to material preview. Now this one should be much more taxing. As you can see there, we're really kind of struggling to get some playback here, but it is still playing at uh, around two FPS, um, better than nothing. Um, so let's just make sure what we're on. And we are on EV, okay, that's good. And let's just switch to the rendered view just to see if that's even going to be possible or not. And it is, okay. So we're getting about 1.9 FPS in the rendered view. Uh, if I try to move around. Yeah, we're getting, yeah, still the same, about 1.8 uh, FPS, so. Definitely not usable for an animation like this with moving parts and editing it on the go. But if you wanna get a brief idea of what it's gonna look like, uh, this is definitely not bad at all. I really can't complain. And as you can see here, the GPU is at 100%. It's being pretty slammed. We are obviously using the EV render engine. Okay, so just to have a quick look at the CPU memory and thermal performance while using the GPU, because obviously with the previous test, we're looking mainly at the CPU. We can see here that, again, CPU is not being used that much. This is mainly a GPU test. Uh, and we switch to the memory tab. Uh, Blender is using about the same as before, so about 13 gigabytes. Uh, still using the exact same amount of swap and not really that much memory pressure there. I'd say that's pretty average. Uh, you can see the GPU history over here. We're using almost 100% of the GPU. And looking at the temperatures of the GPU cores, they're actually staying nice and cool, about 70 degrees Celsius. I mean, that is pretty hot, but in terms of GPUs, uh, that's really not that bad at all. For reference, my RTX 3080 while gaming uh, gets up to around 85, 86 degrees, and that's in a full desktop PC. So these seem to be performing very, very efficiently. And quick note on fans, we are again, barely seeing any fan noise here at all, probably even less than the previous CPU test. And guys, if you've seen my previous videos on this channel, this makes almost zero fan noise unless you're smashing the CPU and the GPU at the same time. Say for example, like a gaming benchmark. With Blender, obviously you tend to go either mostly CPU for specific renders or mostly GPU for other renders. So you're not really smashing both of them at the same time, which means it's gonna stay nice and cool and more importantly, nice and quiet. Now moving on to the hi, my name is Amy animation. So wireframe, totally fine. Material, totally fine. We're getting uh, not 100% the FPS, about 16. If we go up to the next level, we're getting about 10 FPS. Still playing back uh, relatively well. You can see the GPU is doing most of this work because I believe this is an EV, yep, this is an EV render engine. And moving up to rendered view, we can see again, another slight FPS drop to around eight. Uh, but once again, guys, it's playing back and it's working fairly well. Now guys, there are some other tests I can do like the BMW render and all that kind of stuff. So if you do want me to do any kind of additional testing, let me know. I just wanted to make this video relatively brief to give you a good understanding of just how the M1 Pro chip, specifically the 16 inch base model performs on Blender. And as you've hopefully seen, it does perform quite well. So if you are looking at upgrading to this machine from maybe an older machine, I really don't think you will regret it. Anyway, guys, any questions or comments, let me know down below. But apart from that, I'll catch you in the next one.